Uh, today we're going to cover how piecewise functions are written on a TI-84 graphing calculator. Uh, notice below on the title page uh, a proper way of writing it uh, when you hand in uh, a piecewise function for the assignment. And you're going to see that it's going to be very different uh, when we enter it on a TI-84 plus calculator. What I'm going to do right now is going to as I'm going to enter the piecewise function as actually separate functions. I'm going to enter one piece for y1 and another piece for y2. This is where we have maybe x plus x minus 1 as we saw on the title screen um, where x is occupying some domain less than 2. So I'm just going to go to option 5 um, for my boolean variables and I do x minus, or sorry, x is less than 2. And I close my bracket. Now I uh, do the same thing to the other function. I'm now going to enter x squared minus 3x plus 1. Notice that um, my calculator, even though it's a TI-84+, plus, behaves differently from some of your calculators. Um, this is due to uh, downloading a, a ROM upgrade uh, from the TI-84 website. And so you get uh, all of the functions entered on one line instead of outputs spilling over into multiple lines making things look uh, terribly confusing. So second function math is how we uh, put our Boolean comparisons, the greater than less than signs in other words. And for the domain of the quadratic, we're going to say that it's going to be any number greater than or equal to 2. So no part of the domain of y1 belongs to y2. No part of the domain of y2 belongs to y1. When we plot the pieces together, we see a break in the function. You might recognize that as a jump discontinuity. So at this point, um, what I'm going to do is basically try to put these two parts together. But one thing I want to do first is see if I can make these parts join up. And, well, f x squared plus 3x plus 2 wasn't good enough. We'll bump it up one more uh, to 3. We'll bump the constant term up to 3, see if we can get the 2 to meet. And you'll find that in your own experience, this'll, this will be the result of plenty of trial and error. So you can see now the two pieces meet up and we got something reasonably good. But we haven't tested for continuity yet. Here are the three criteria that we'll review at the end of this exercise. So to trace a graph reliably, the two functions can actually be combined into y1 and y2, or actually y1 plus y2 to be precise. So uh, there is a vars key below the arrow keypad and when you hit vars you get this menu. We want to go over to y vars, that's a second set of menus. We do this by pressing the right arrow key and we select one for function and then one for y1. So now we got y1 as part of y3. Now we want to add y1 to y2. We do the same thing again. We choose 2 for y2. Now we have y1 plus y2. The only problem is now y1 and y2 individually don't need to be plotted anymore since y3 takes care of everything now. We can deselect those two functions by moving the cursor over to the equal sign and pressing enter. Now we have the same graph as before, except now it's plotted as if it were a single function. And that's exactly what we want, because a piecewise function ultimately is just a single function with a single domain with multiple rules over parts of that domain. So if we now... Uh, do a trace and that's not what I wanted to press. I think what I wanted to do was to just hit trace. I wanted to go into trace mode and move the cursor around a bit. 
if I move the cursor around past the point of discontinuity, and remember that's where x equals 2, um, you'll notice that I do not have to flip over functions. I do not have to exchange between y1 and y2. This is treated as a honest to God continuous function, continuous, well not continuous uh, in the sense we haven't proven that yet, but it certainly is um, it certainly is traceable along the entire domain as a single function. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use Cauchy. So back again just to check that everything's okay. Now we're going to use Cauchy. I'm going to enter 1.9999. This is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And notice I get y equals 0.99, almost 1. Now I enter 2.0001 and I get 1.0001, just a little above 1. So I got a little bit below 1, a little bit above 1. And by entering 2 itself, I get exactly 1. Well, that satisfies all three parts of Cauchy's continuity. Okay, Entering something a little less and entering something a little more than 2 satisfies the condition that the limit exists because the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is going to equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right approximately. We also showed that f of 2 actually yielded a value. We got something out of it. And in fact, we saw that this is approximately equal to the limit as x approaches 2.